Hello everyone, welcome to our Subtip Webcast. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to deploy a domain controller using the install from media option also known as IFM in Windows Server 2019. The first question will arise in our mind is why we need IFM when we can normally install additional domain controller without any problem? To understand the use of IFM, let's take an example. Suppose we have a company with headquarter and one branch office. In the branch office, we are planning to install a new domain controller, but the WAN connection between the headquarter and branch office is very slow. And the activity database is very big in a size. As we know that at the time of installing additional domain controller, the complete set of activity database will transfer from existing domain controller to new one. So in a situation where we have the branch office with very slow WAN link or very big Active Directory database, we would need a lot of time to replicate the data from the headquarter domain controller to the branch office one. So in that scenario, IFM will be very handy. By using the IFM, you can export the Active Directory database file to an external media such as DVD or USB. Just insert the external media on the server which you want to configure as an additional domain controller and use it as a source for Active Directory database files. Thus, IFM reduce the consumption of network bandwidth and also reduce the configuration time. But remember, you still need network connectivity between your servers. So, let's get started. For this video demonstration, I'm using Oracle VM VirtualBox and in that I have created total three virtual machines. All virtual machines are currently running on Windows Server 2019. Let's take a look at our root domain controller. This is our root domain controller named WS2K19-DC01 and our domain name is mylab.local. The IP address which is assigned to the server is 172.18.72.5. We have one more additional domain controller and that is WS2K19-DC02. The IP address of that server is 172.18.72.6. For this demonstration, I am using this server named Delhi-DC03. This computer is in workgroup and the IP address as you can see 192.168.72.5. Let's click on this IP address. That will open Ethernet adapter. Let's select the properties. Select Internet Protocol version 4 and click on Properties. You can see the IP address is 192.168.72.5 and the subnet mask is default. Default gateway is 192.168.72.1 and our preferred DNS server address is 172.18.72.5 and 172.18.72.6. This is the IP address of our root domain controller and the existing additional domain controller. Now let's check network connectivity between both domain controllers. Let's ping to 172.18.72.5 and as you can see we are receiving replay from our root domain controller. Let's ping to our additional domain controller as well and we are also receiving replay from our additional domain controller. Now I'm going to ping to our domain name that is mylab.local. And we are receiving replay from 172.18.72.5. Now you can also run command nslookup to check DNS server is working or not. Fine. So we have a network connectivity between our all servers. Now in the first step, we need to generate IFM media on our root domain controller. So you can also generate the IFM media on additional domain controller because both domain controllers are replicating the data. So we have a same database on both domain controllers. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to open a PowerShell. Let's right click on start button and select Windows PowerShell admin. At a PowerShell, first of all, I'm going to run command NTDS util. Okay, at NTDS util command, now we need to type command activate instance NTDS. Press enter key. Fine, now you can see activate instance set to NTDS. Now we can take help if you don't know the commands, you can simply type help command here and that will show us that here we have options for IFM which is used to create media. So let's type IFM and then press enter key. Now again let's take help here. 
here we have a plenty of options like create full create full with no defragmentation create rodc create syswall full and other for this demonstration we want our active directory database with syswall and that's why i'm going to use create a syswall full now we need to specify the location where you want to export this database let's open file explorer and on a c drive i'm going to create a new folder let's give name ifm dc01 okay right now this folder is totally empty let's copy this path and at a powershell i'm going to paste it fine now we simply need to press enter key you can see it is telling us that it is creating a snapshot of our active directory database and now defragmentation is also going on and that's it here we are receiving message that ifm media created successfully in c colon slash ifm dc01 let's go to that folder and here we have a total three folders under the root folder first is active directory under that you can see we have a one file with the name entds.dit this is the active directory database file let's go back here we have a registries so whatever registries are needed those entries are stored under this folder and we have a syswall you can see malab.local folder is there and under let's double click on policies we have total four group policies in our active directory let's check about group policies Let's expand group policy objects and here you can see we have four group policy objects and that's why those policies are stored here. So now you need to transfer this folder to the branch office server by using any option you want. For example, you can copy this folder to removable disk and take it to the branch office location. But we are in a virtual environment so I'm going to copy this folder using a network shell. You cannot use this method in a real world scenario using removable media like external hard disk or usb is the preferred method to transfer ifm media to the branch office server let's go to our delhi dc03 and now i'm going to access the hidden shell the ip address of our root domain controller is 172.18.72.5 let's access uh, hidden shell which is a c dollar and here we have our folder ifm dc one again i'm repeating i'm in a virtual environment that's why i can copy over the network but in production environment you have to use any external media let's right click on it and select copy i'm going to store this uh, ifm folder on a d drive okay then let's close this console now we are going to use this ifm media to promote this server as an additional domain controller. Let's click on manage, select add rules and features, click on next, next again. Here this is our server delhi dc 3 let let's click on next. I'm going to select active directory domain services, click on add features, next, next, next again and click on install. Uh, let's go to our root domain controller let's minimize this console and i'm going to open active directory users and computer snapping let's expand my root local and let's click on domain controllers container here you can see we have total two domain controllers ws 2 k 19 dc 01 and ws 2 k 19 dc 02 let's go back to our server okay as you can see active directory domain services has been successfully installed on this server now let's promote this server to an additional domain controller let's click on this link that will start active directory domain service configuration wizard here we need to select the first box which is uh, add a domain controller to an existing domain let's specify the domain name mylab.local and let's specify the credential as well administrator add mylab.local and its password let's click on ok Click on next. On domain controller options page, as you can see, DNS server role has been selected as well as global catalog server. And the site name is automatically selected, default first site name. Remember, we haven't created or configured active directory sites and subnets. 
for this Active Directory infrastructure that we are going to do in the future videos. Right now, I'm going to specify DSRM password. Let's click on next. Next again. And here we have our options to specify IFM options. So this time, we're going to deploy domain controller using IFM. That's why we need to select this checkbox. It will give you options to select the path. Let's click on these three dots. And let's browse the path where we have stored our IFM database, which is on D drive with the name folder IFM-DC01. Let's click on OK. So our path will be D colon slash IFM-DC01. Okay. Now here we have our options to specify additional replication options. Remember, we have a two domain controllers currently exist in our malware.local domain. So I'm going to select replicate from DC01. Fine. Let's click on next. We are going to use the default path for Active Directory database, log files, and syswap. Let's click on next. Next again. As you can see, all checks passed successfully. Now we can start installation by clicking on install button. As you can see here, we have one more message that if you click on install, the server will automatically reboot at the end of the promotion of operation. Let's click on install to start the installation. The wizard is currently using IFM options to promote this server as an additional domain controller. And that's why you can see messages there. Active Directory Domain Services is initializing the restored database files. This might take several minutes. After restart, let's again log in to our newly promoted domain controller. Let's specify the password of our domain admin and press enter key. Let's click on tools. Let's click on active directory users and computers. Let's click on mylab.local. Click on domain controllers container. And here you can see now we have total three domain controllers. WS2K19-DC01, DC02 and Delhi-DC03. Let's minimize it. I'm going to click on local server. Let's click on IP address because now I'm going to change the IP address of our preferred DNS server. Let's select Ethernet adapter. Go for the properties. Select Internet Protocol version 4 and properties. Now, let's click on advanced. Click on DNS tab. Uh, loopback address is there, so I'm going to remove it. Let's click on add. And it will be 192 dot 168.72.5 dot dot that is the IP address of this local server and that will be our preferred DNS server fine let's click on OK and OK let's close this and let's check replication between domain controllers as well expand sites expand default first site name expand servers Expand Delhi hyphen DC03. Click on Entity Settings. Right click and go for the All Tasks. Check Replication Topology and click on OK. Now we have a two automatically generated link. One from DC01 and the second one from DC02. Okay. Let's right click on Entity Settings. Go for the Properties and let's click on Connection tab. Here we have a connections from both domain controllers. DC01 and DC02. And this is 01 and this is 02 under replicate 2. So, this is the way how we can deploy additional domain controller using install from media option. That's it for this video demonstration. In the next video demonstration, we will see how we can create sites and subnets in Windows Server 2019 Active Directory domain. Thank you all for watching this video.